steps. It's, it's neat. Neat place. Where are we going to be sitting? Right there.
You go on to the next slide for me. Isaiah 7, 14 tells us, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Likewise, in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Merry Christmas. And welcome to the Salem United Methodist Church. Um, we were very blessed this year to, to be able to host our community Thanksgiving service, and we are doubly blessed here at Salem to be able to host our Christmas service as well this year. And I'm just so jazzed, I'm so excited to really be kicking off the Christmas season as family. And as we've said before, that's exactly what we are. Y'all, we don't got different Jesuses. We, we just got the one, and that's who we worship. We are family. And so tonight what we're going to be doing is we are going to uh, have an opportunity to just dive deep into the music and the worship of our Lord and Savior. Tonight is what's considered to be a traditional cantata. That is, if you'll listen and watch, what will happen is the scriptures and the songs will take us on a story, starting with the prophecies of who the Messiah would be, moving on to the visions that Mary and Joseph had, through the time of the angels and the shepherds and the birth and, and the great proclamation of our Savior, we will, through music and through scripture, celebrate together. And along the way, our brothers here, our, our clerical friends, are going to offer one to three, maybe five sentences on each scripture that's just going to touch our hearts. And so of, we, of what we just read, this time of the year, so many love Christ in with Frosty, with Rudolph, and with the overwinning guy who breaks into people's houses. Our Christ is real. I've experienced too much to think of him. That is the Jesus we're here to worship. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to sit at your feet, to once again celebrate and remember your Son. But we thank you, Jesus, for literally sharing your birthday with us. We thank you that you came to give the greatest gifts and that you did not require us to give to you. We thank you that yours is an endless fountain of grace and hope and strength. And so we sit, open-hearted, transparent, eager to spend time with you, praying that all we do in this space brings glory and honor to you above all else. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good evening. chapter 53, I'm going to read the first five verses. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, 
stricken by him, afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought peace on us was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. I love the scripture because it reminds us that the answers never come through politics. The answers don't come through wisdom and, and education. The answers our society need don't even come through unity and friendship. The answers come through Jesus Christ. He's the only one that has the power to change a person's heart. And that's exactly what we need in these times. Amen. Amen. Please join us now as we sing our first hymn of the night. Oh, come all ye faithful. Number 234. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. 
Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his, his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And through the Lord, and, and through the Lord makes his life an offering of sin. He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify men, and he will bear their iniquity. How can that be? We saw the song a moment ago, Come, let us adore him. Then I look at the scripture. Then I go back to the words of the song again. Come, let us adore him. Then I realize there's a paradox, there's a conflict here. And again, I look at the scripture. Yet it pleased the Lord to, pre to abuse him. But yet, we say today, come, let us adore him. We had to know about the torture, the pain, the torment, how we really are, so we can appreciate what he did. Yes. And in that appreciation, we can understand and rejoice by saying, come, let us adore him. Please join us now as we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's on page 211, and we'll sing verses 1 through 4. And please stand with us.
scriptures have read the passages of scripture from the Old Testament, the prophets. And sometimes when we look at the prophets and look at the prophecies, we wonder how in the world they fit together. Well, when Luke penned his gospel, he set about giving us a clear picture of how all of those prophecies wove together. So he writes, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who were first eyewitnesses of the, and servants of the world. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. And then in verse 26, we come to the announcements of Mary. And as you hear these words, you'll hear many of the things that were already read in the Old Testament. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting this might be? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants. Forever, his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. And Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. You know, when I look at this passage, I am reminded of the faith of Oh, he makes a promise, and he keeps the promise. In here, there is a promise related to the birth, but there is also a promise related to his rule, his eternal rule. And as we make our way through the service, we're going to celebrate at the end. And he will reign. How long? Forever. And ever. And ever. Amen? Amen. We have the opportunity every time we gather, or many times we gather, and it seems like the Baptist pastor gets to ask for the offering every time. <laughs> that's okay. But to receive an offering, and the offering doesn't go to the pastors. It goes to our community. Community Cares is a very precious, very important ministry in our community. This Thanksgiving, we, as a community helped almost 200 families. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Praise be to God. So the offering tonight is going to go to help further the ministry of community cares. And we want to ask you to give as the Lord bless you. And the Lord puts it on your heart to inspire us.
Let's give thanks to the Lord. Father, every good and every perfect gift comes from you, and we thank you for that. And we recognize, Father God, that this offering is a gift given out of love. And I pray, Father God, that you would use it for your honor and for your glory. I pray for community cares. I ask, oh God, that that ministry would continue to flourish and grow. Father God, that your hand of blessing would be upon them. Father, as they hand out food and as they minister, that they would also share the love of Christ. For those in our community who need to have hope, to know that you care, know that you love. So use this, Father, for your honor and for your glory, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. amen.
We're going to continue the, uh, the narrative in the book of Luke, the second chapter. As my brothers have told you before, when God makes a promise, it's a done deal. That's an exciting thing, and I don't know what promises he's made to you, but the book is full of them. And whatever promises that you've held in your heart and you say, I know God made me this promise, you can be assured it's going to come to pass. God doesn't just waste words. He says what he means and he means what he says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, starting in the first verse. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Galilee, or the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. It's amazing to me that God uses difficult circumstances to fulfill his will constantly. This was one of those times. I'm sure it wasn't easy for a pregnant woman to have to travel uh, from their home around the Sea of Galilee down to Bethlehem. But God had a purpose. God had a plan. And I'm here to tell you that tonight, whatever you're going through, God has a purpose. And God has a plan. And it seems like he knows how to get his people in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. That's what he did with Mary and Joseph that night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please join us now as we sing Silent Night. And we'll sing all of verses 1, 2, and 4. And if you'll please stand with us.
as we have gone from prophecy to fulfillment of prophecy. Let's hear the word said as in St. Luke chapter 2. Begin in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Praise the name of the Lord. As I begin to share these follow on scriptures, one thing comes to mind is the fact that Joseph was knocking on the door and there was no room in the inn for he and this, and he and Mary and the baby Jesus. All the think back on that scripture and are reminded that even today the Lord is knocking on our doors. But the irony in these subsequent on the following scriptures is that the Lord thought it worthy to go to the shepherds. The shepherd, many, many times we would find symbolically and in reference, was referred to as Jesus Christ. When you think throughout the scripture, where Jesus is the son of David, and David's original occupation was that of a shepherd. How fitting it is for the Lord to send his angels. Go and tell my shepherds that the Savior has come. What a mighty, powerful essence we see in the scripture. Yes, Jesus even has the term that David acknowledges and says, The Lord is my shepherd. What can we say? What can we do? When they showed up, the angels found the Shepherd sleep, but yet they was on their duty, taking care of what they need to be taken care of. And as I, as I think about this announcement, and I think about what we're sharing this evening, I believe that we all can appreciate when the word said, search the scripture, and in it you will find life.
Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorified him, and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. They were there at the epicenter. Their lives were shaken. And so what did they do? They went and told. They told people what God had done, what they had seen. Brothers and sisters, we need to do the very same thing. Yeah. If you've had an encounter with Jesus, praise, glorify, and tell people what you have seen. Go tell it in the van, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Please stand.
My friends, this evening you've been taken on a journey. As the choir and I prayed earlier today, with something that goes beyond words. That's what music does. That's what scripture does. But when we leave this place, we can't remember that this story is different than that of a snowman or a reindeer, though the world would lump them together. Okay? As we leave this place, we also want to let you know, come into the fellowship hall. Now that we've fed your souls, we want to feed your tummies. Now that you've been energized with the Holy Spirit, we want to energize you with sugar. Okay? Woo Praise the Lord! And wherever you are at in your own journey, as you continue on in this Advent season, know that your God is walking with you. Whether you can see it or not, whether it looks like he's missing or not, it is working together for the glory of those who love him. Receive that as your mission and your blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.